Welcome everyone to Lord Mayhem reading for today. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom of page 1487 and we are in the year 1932. We're in the midst of some correspondence between Baba and Gandhi. This is uh, picking up here. A third letter from Gandhi was received on a the following day, the letter was dated 19 October 32, addressed to Dadachanji. <clears throat> I got your letter of the 8th and the accompanying pages. I have gone through the letter. I don't think that it should be published. It leaves out a great deal, and what it includes is what it includes is put in such a form which can easily, which can be easily misunderstood. I am therefore of the opinion that no part of it should be published. All that is necessary to state is that the relationship between Baba and me is not that of guru and disciple, but is that of two ordinary friends. And that most of the conversation that took place between us related to spiritual matters. Thus the public here or in the West need not attach any importance to our meeting or conversation. I do not see any necess necessity either to print or say anything more of the aforesaid. Mohandas Gandhi. The following is Chanji's reply to Gandhi. 24th October, 1932, dear Gandhiji. Your letter of the 19th was just received in Bombay. I, feel ha I felt happy to read your reply because it will also serve my purpose in telling those many concerned that you too do not like the idea of making public this affair. Of course, there cannot be any objection from Sri Baba to this, for he does not want any kind of publicity over this affair, or for that matter, any other affair. Therefore, for the present, I feel it is best to drop the matter. Regarding certain points in your present letter, I intend to clarify this, is my, this in my next letter. Meanwhile, I want you to know that I have not yet received your reply to my previous letter, to which in this last letter of yours, you seem to have hinted that you have replied. Baba will most probably tour Europe and America next month, visiting various places in regard to a spiritual mission. Preparations for this tour are now afoot. This much in haste, yours, F.H. Dadachanji. <clears throat> to clarify matters between them, Chanji wrote a long letter to Gandhi three days later. Dated 27th October, Nasik, dear Gandhiji. Your letter of the 19th was reached me on the 23rd in Bombay. As I wrote, I felt happy to get your letter because the contents of it will now serve a useful purpose in replying to people who seek information. I can now tell them openly that you do not deem it fit at present to make public anything pertaining to these talks. Of course, Baba would not want it otherwise. There is no question of his say on this matter. He remains very indifferent to whatever is given by the press. Besides, he dislikes publicity. What little has been published to date was given to the press in order to get rid of the reporters knocking at our doors and hounding us for news and disturbing Baba. Also, because some of his lovers are most enthusiastic to spread his message of love and truth, they pressed Baba into giving interviews to reporters in the West and also in Bombay. All this publicity has created a mess because the reporters misrepresented facts, which resulted in creating misunderstandings. Knowing well the ways of reporters, and their habit of giving a twist to facts to suit their interests, Baba prohibited, prohibited all interviews before he landed in India. Thus, people could not know Baba's movements. You too had hinted regarding this when we met some time ago during my first visit to you. Baba enforced such restrictions because he did not want people to be led further astray by misunderstandings created by the press. Now, it so happened that Baba had to slacken the rigid restrictions he had imposed regarding publicity through the press because of the following reasons. One, soon after Baba's return from the West, his devotees pressed him to give some latitude 
in circulating his schedule for the benefit of other lovers. Two, press reporters visited Baba and appealed to him for the release of information. Three, there cropped up an urgent need for clarification because some newspapers tried to drag Baba indirectly into politics after associating him and his talks with you and Dr. Ambedkar about your political movements. Or also there was the need to tell the public that the Meher Baba and Gandhi meetings and talks had nothing to do with a master disciple relationship. The talks were not based on this, nor did either of you mention a word of it during that time. Five, now whatever talks you held were mostly of a spiritual nature. Six, and to top it all, when we told Baba that you had hinted at our last meeting, why don't the press report news of Baba these days? Baba then gave the desired latitude to use the press as a means of reaching his lovers and feeding them with news by saying, do what you think is best, but see that you do not give a single word in the press concerning Gandhiji without letting him read it first. Thus, Baba gave us his sanction with strict instructions. Accordingly, in the detailed report to be prepared for the press release, Baba's devotees thought it best to incorporate your visits to Baba and the talks that took place with certain clarifications, as well as reports on Baba's visit to the West. But the devotees did not possess any data on your three meetings with Baba on board the Rajputana and subsequent developments. Naturally, they approached me and I gave them some fragments because all that was exchanged during the meetings because all that was exchanged during the meetings was not meant for the press. Based on information gathered, the fellow devotees made a rough draft of a detailed report for press release. And I sent to you only that portion of the report which concerned the Meher Baba and Gandhi meetings and talks for your perusal, corrections, additions, and alterations. You will now gather from this that whatever was decided to be given as a report for the press was formulated with a view to clear up the misunderstanding created all along by the press, which delighted in giving sensational news regarding Baba and his activities and your meetings with Baba. Our intention was as simple as it was obvious, but from your letter, I find that it has been misconstrued and has given rise to some sort of misunderstanding. You're, you mention in your letter that much has been left out, and I agree with you to this, because it would not do to make public all that transpired during the meetings. And it was not possible to incorporate everything in the general report. But when you mention in your letter that, quote, the meaning had changed, unquote, I cannot see any such sign of it, and I don't believe it to be so because I have taken great pains to be specially on the watch to see that nothing in the report should give any exaggerated picture of the happenings and much less would I tolerate any alterations of meaning or misrepresentation of facts. In spite of all this, you have raised doubts. Therefore, please note that I have dropped the matter of submitting the report to the press. Sometime in the future, when we happen to meet, we will personally thrash out this point in order to throw a better light on the issue. Meanwhile, I deem it advisable to remain silent on this subject. And according to your wish mentioned in your letter, may you please rest assured that we will not give any report to the press. At present, we are engrossed in making preparation for Baba's impending trip to the West, either at the beginning or the end of next month. You hinted in your letter that you, quote, you must have received by now that which I wrote to you in reply to your letter, end quote. The reply, this reply I have not yet received, and I have been constantly awaiting your reply to my letter. 
because you had written in one of your postcards saying, I shall write the reply within two to three days. Failing to receive your reply, I sent to you only today the following telegram. Received letter of 18th, but no reply to my last letter of 23rd September. Letter follows. Hope you have received this telegram. Okay. Let's have another reader, please. I can read. Good. Go ahead. So it is page 1491 for Tofino and the year 1932. Following up this matter, Chanji further wrote to Gandhi. It is November 1st, 1932, Nasser. Dear, Maha, dear Mahatmaji, dear Mahatmaji, I received your letter of the 28th along with a copy of your letter of the 10th enclosed therein. After reading these, I could not resist showing them to Baba. He read both and then smilingly said, It is true, there is bound to occur misunderstanding through misrepresentation of facts recollected and written down by a third person, especially if reproduced by another, not directly involved in the conversation that has taken place. Now write what I dictate. Baba dictated in Gujarati on his board the following as a direct reply to you. There are many who have delusions of having realized God. After reading Vedanta and Sufi literature, many genuinely believe that they have attained the state of Ahambarahamasi or Analha means I am God. Nevertheless, such delusions are far better and more tolerable than the established assumptions of mankind that this world and its affairs are everlasting and real. What I say is that it is far better to be led into believing that I am not other than Paramatma than to get established into believing that I am only a speck of dust, I am a sinner, and I am weak. A little bit further. And then quote again. But there are also some heroes who continually experience within themselves and, all, and in all others, the eternal one. And they are once and for all, for all time free of the delusions. These who have realized the, the truth and have continual experience of it can give to the others the experience of the eternal one residing in them. Because they who have realized the truth, capital truth, have neither to do nor to give anything except to lay bare the eternal one by wiping off the film of separative ignorance that has spread over the one and eternal atma residing equally in themselves as well as in others. End quote. At this point, Sherry Baba smilingly indicated on the board, quote, tell Dozaji an affectionate term for an old man to let us know how he finds my Gujarati. And then we continue on page 1492. Baba continued, quote, politics, social affairs, economics, etc., are but different facets of the same one substance. 
spirituality because each of these are included in the knowledge of the one, capital one. Spirituality includes everything, politics, economics, ethics, social welfare, civics, and all other kinds of service. Just as the rays of the sun are not different from the sun, so also each of these divisions is but a different branch of the same eternal one. Thus, indirectly, from the point of spirituality, I always play my part in all these things, and I say so, and I always make others do so. The difference is only this, that whereas the ignorant one experiences Maya and wants this and that in Maya, the Denyani means one who has realized God, we use even Maya as an expression of God and experiences it as such. Another quote. There was a certain newspaper in the West that got hold of the notion of a master-disciple relationship between us. Apprentices, but attention was drawn to this and a correction was immediately sent. Now you, on the other hand, write that you are a student of Baba, etc. I view both these things quite differently. That is, I take you as Premi Mitra, one who is my loving friend, because in each one, I see no other than myself. Thus, whose guru can I be, and where can the chila or disciple be? According to me, of all friends, he alone is dearest, who remains infinitely restless for truth. But tell Dozaji that he cannot thus wriggle out, wriggle out of his promise to help render my articles in Gujarati, because when I had agreed to his suggestion to get all the articles rendered into Gujarati, and he said that he should check and correct them from the point of view of a language. He had then said that he would definitely give his help as much as he could in this work. He could not have forgotten this. When we happen to meet again, we will some more we will have some more fun. This reply Jotted down word by word by me is exactly as Shreem Baba dictated through his alphabet board. And for, from myself now, I have a request, and that is that you will please reply to this letter because I believe that there has cropped up a misunderstanding in the past between us while exchanging lengthy correspondence. I have a feeling that as a result of this, Baba is probably somewhat aggrieved. Page 1493. And although Baba has never once even hinted or blamed me for, for it, nevertheless, it has made me feel uneasy for quite some time and I believe that you reply to this letter, that your reply to this letter will relieve me of this feeling. Sometime when an opportunity arises for a personal interview with you, we will both have an occasion for explanations. How brave change is. Please note that Sharif Baba will be leaving India for the West within 15 to 20 days. Yours from Rose H. Dadachanji. 
Gandhi replied to Chanji's letter, dated 3rd November 1932. Yerav, Yerav, Yerav Mandir, Brother Sheri Chanji, received your letter today. You wrote, quote, Baba said, and quote, and drew a red pencil line quite thick under the word said. If Baba has not said through the board, but has said with the tongue, then may I not take it that my letter has the power, power to make Baba break his silence? And thus, one is driven to accept that the age of miracles has not yet passed away. Please tell Baba that that which he dictated that which he dictated on his board in Gujarati was sweet of him indeed. I may not agree with all what Baba said through the board in Gujarati, and I hope to have a hot discussion someday when we meet personally, God willing, for such a thing is not possible through correspondence. Also tell Baba that Duzaji's promise will not be in vain. If Baba wrote in Gujarati and I approved, then I will surely edit his writings. Was this not the condition? To have heard from you that spirituality includes everything, politics, economics, ethics, social and civil, and all other kinds of service is more than sufficient for me. I liked the claim of friendship you put forth, but I feel that it's quite unnecessary to garnish friendship with the term of quote unquote loving friend, because a friendship bereft of love cannot endure. A friendship bereft of love cannot endure. You have no cause to feel disheartened. Misunderstandings do crop up frequently, but where there is a will to clear up all misunderstandings, there cannot be any obstruction created, no harm done. Where will you all go and for how long on this trip to the West? And you tell Baba that I cannot understand all this dot or hustle bustle touring. And then he signs as Mohandas Gandhi. In reply to Gandhi, to Gandhi, Chanji wrote on November 8, 1932 from Nasek, Dear Mahatma Ji, received your letter of the third. Sherry Baba felt happy to read this, its contents. In reply, Sherry Baba has directed me to convey to you that whatever interesting things he wished to impart concerning yourself could be done better personally when a meeting with you take, takes place. Communicating through letters make these expressions appear dry and the written words then lose interest and charm. They cannot carry with them the same flavor with which they are seasoned as then expressed, as when expressed personally. Therefore, Sherry Baba also agrees with you and says that when you are with him sometime, it will afford an occasion for a grand time together. This time, there is the likelihood of our Western tour being prolonged for about six months. Baba intends leaving Bombay on the 21st for Italy, Germany, and England. And after that, he also intends to visit America. The cause of such hustle bustle world tours may be attributed to the fact that these have become absolutely necessary in view of the increasing love and devotion of both his Eastern and Western followers, 
who equally need more of Baba's physical presence. The code of capital law is absolutely different and unique. Baba will have to spend six months a year in the East and six months in the West. This appears inevitable from all outward indications for his mission of establishing a spiritual link between the East and the West and of consolidating this spiritual get together as a basis for his spiritual work. Misunderstanding has once again arisen because of my, my having written to you in my last letter, the words Baba said. This should not be taken to mean that Baba spoke with his tongue. It is to be understood as Baba having said with the help of the alphabet word. How can it be possible to speak without breaking the silence? It is now a routine affair during these many years of conversing, of corresponding with others about Baba to mention very frequently, Sherry Baba said, or Sherry Baba says. This is always understood as Baba having said by means of his alphabet board. Contrary to what you write in your letter, none of us here have ever underlined with red pen pencil the word said in my letter. On the other hand, we often found red and blue pencil and ink marks and scratches in your letters received from your end. We took for granted that this could not possibly be done by you. We now realize that you gave importance to the words Baba said, especially because you found the word said underlined in red pencil. I think somebody else should read. Okay, let me finish the lecture. All this explanation will make you understand these points quite clearly. Yours, Bambros H. Dadachanji. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, Eva, would you like to read? Sure. Okay, pick it up here at the PS in that last letter. Okay, PS. In the letter to you, Baba mentioned you as Premi Mitra, a loving friend. Regarding this, Baba says that his superfine Gujarati has thus rendered into Gujarati the two English words, dear friend. Baba also says that he will continue to mention you as such because having taken you as his friend, he looks upon you as a prem lover of God. Baba sends his love and blessings. The necessary preparations having been made and visas obtained, Baba and four Mandali left Nasik for a fourth trip to Europe. On Monday, 21 November, 1932, Baba and his companions sailed from Bombay at 12.45 p.m. aboard the Cant Verde, an Italian liner. The Mondali with him on the voyage were his brothers, Jabhai uh, and Adi Jr., Vishnu and Kaka. An eager crowd had gathered at the quayside, hoping to catch a glimpse of one of their fellow passengers, Hollywood actor Douglas Fairbanks, who had boarded the ship in the Far East and was returning to America. Fairbanks had hosted a reception for Baba in Hollywood the previous June. Uh, footnote says it's not known whether Douglas Fairbanks 
and any contact with Baba or the Mandali during the 11 day voyage. Once at sea, Baba issued the following message to the Indian press. India is a spiritual country. It possesses the most fortunate and unique position in the world, being the land of saints and spiritual masters since ages. Therefore, the spiritual atmosphere of India must be kept up even at the cost of being in bondage and materially unhappy. It does not matter how much India suffers as long as its spiritual power and value are retained. Moreover, the result of its present suffering will be freedom and happiness. It is only after experiencing bondage and misery that the true value of freedom and happiness are really appreciated. But to bring this suffering to an earlier end, there must be love for friend and foe. There must be goodwill, patience, and forbearance. Also, India should try to remedy its own defects instead of clamoring at the faults of others. The hatred between the leading communities and their petty, yet disastrous quarrels and fights must cease. Then freedom and happiness will be assured for India. The world will soon realize that neither cults, creeds, dogmas, religious ceremonies, lectures, or sermons on the one hand, nor ardent searching for material welfare and physical pleasures on the other can ever bring about real happiness. Only selfless love and universal brotherhood can do it. Of the early foreign trips Baba made, this was the only one in which Chanji did not accompany him. As Baba set sail for Europe, Rustam had been ordered to sail to Los Angeles by way of China to do certain work in Hollywood. Rustam left on 2 December 1932. Chanji was also directed to go to China to stay for some time with Herbert Davy. He took a ship to China later in December. Before leaving, Chanji recorded these thoughts in a letter to the Kimco group. Separation from Baba is no easy thing, particularly for one who has stayed with him so closely for over seven long years. It means something unthinkable. No one can have any idea. I myself have no idea. It could be so acutely severe. I have seen so many suffer and they always had my warmest sympathy and fellow feelings. At times, I cried over these sufferings of others but I still had no practical idea of it myself until it came on me personally. When Baba told me this time to stay in India and do his work of seeing Herbert in China, I had to, of course. Nothing could be more faithless at this, at this moment than to refuse. But how I did it, this heart alone can tell. For a week, even while Baba was still in India, I moved about like one dead, quite blank in mind, and with a piece of ice in my stomach, dull, cold, stunned, benumbed. And when he left, life seemed extinct. Everything looked lifeless. Baba and the Mandali arrived in Venice on Friday, 2 December, 1932. 
They were met there by Elizabeth Patterson, Norena Machabelli, Nadine Tolstoy, and Quentin Todd. They then traveled by train toward London, arriving in Milan on the 4th, where Enid Corfe and another devotee met them. The group stayed overnight at the Hotel Diana, leaving at 5 p.m. the next evening. Baba arrived in Paris at 6 a.m. on the 6th and left for London at noon, arriving the same day. Meanwhile, Kitty Davy and the others in the Kimco group had arranged for Baba's seven day stay at the Knightsbridge Hotel. No sooner had Baba arrived than his lovers enthusiastically flocked to be near him. This was the first opportunity Elizabeth and Norena had to meet the London group. Norena had many acquaintances in London and she brought them to meet her beloved. Among them were Count, Countess Catherine, Kitty, Pollen of Russia, Baroness Rothschild, Lady Stella Vitelschi, and Vivian Geisen. Let's and see the, the footnote here. <clears throat> uh, Stella Vitelschi was an Italian actress who later appeared in Ben Hur. Vivian Geisen was an interpretive dancer known as Oria who had studied with Marina. Baba was teaching his gopis to sing his song, Age Observed, so that others might be drawn to the master musician. The song is contained only in the wine, which reverberates its strings. And who, except the sake, can bestow this wine of love? Baba explained to his lovers that he wished them to come to India the following year. And for the first time, he spoke to Kimko about Mehera and her intense, pure love for him. He gestured, Mehera is my Radha and her life consists of my happiness. When you see her, you will have an idea of her love for me. Her love always keeps me happy. During this visit, Baba would go about London incognito. When relaxing in the hotel, he would let his long hair down and assign the duty of combing it to Delia and Margaret, spelling out on his board, how lucky you are that here, I give you the work that Mehera does in India. On more than one occasion, there was a discussion about the idea of making a film of Baba's life. This project particularly interested Norena, who had pursued it with different filmmakers since Baba had mentioned it at the Harmon retreat in 1931. While Baba was in London, Kitty was always busy attending to different matters serving others in a selfless manner. Delia was at the hotel full time, acting as a secretary, making appointments for interviews and answering the telephone. Baba and a group usually went to movies in the evening and he was particularly fond of the comedies of Charlie Chaplin, Laurel and Hardy and Fatty Arbuckle. During this time, an intellectual Indian Brahmin named Chak Chakradhar Dharmanitar Desh Deshmukh, 24, was studying for his doctorate in philosophy in London. Deshmukh came to know of Mayor Baba's presence in the city through the accounts in the Daily Herald. Baba had actually inwardly contacted him four months earlier as Deshmukh 
Deshmukh. Deshmukh. Oh, thank you. Deshmukh dreamed he saw Baba standing before him. In the dream, Baba spoke to him. You are closely connected with me. You are a good man. Seeing him hesitating to accept this, Baba asked, are you not? Deshmukh had replied, good or bad, please take me up into you. Baba's response was an immediate wave of love and light. It was like bathing in cool, clear moonlight, Deshmukh later related. When Deshmukh saw a photograph of Baba in the newspaper, he recognized him as the one who had already won his heart. He was further attracted to his Lord and longed to have his darshan. Deshmukh later recollected, as I looked at the photograph, I found in his eyes just that assurance of divine guidance which I had been looking for. The expression in his eyes brought to me the tidings of truth from that far off land unseen, where there is the final realization of the eternal and infinite source and goal of life. Dejmuk came to see Baba at the Knightsbridge Hotel on Thursday, 8 December, 1932. He brought with him Mrs. McGregor Morris, a professor, and Mr. N.C. Kelkar, a noted Mar Marathi writer and politician who had come to London for the roundtable conference. During their meeting, Baba asked young Dishmuk, what do you do? Dishmuk explained that he was studying philosophy and what is the meaning of philosophy, Baba inquired mischievously. Deshmukh answered, it is a science which reveals the hidden reality. Smiling, Baba replied, to me, philosophy is that which makes a simple thing difficult. Meeting ba Meher Baba face to face, had a profound effect on Dr. Deshmuk, as he was later called, for this darshan taught him the true meaning of philosophy. From then on, he became an ardent disciple and proved helpful in Baba's writing and publication work. Baba's continuous search for the ideal or perfect boy began in the Meher Ashram in 1927 and lasted until 1958. A search for a suitable boy for Baba's personal work was inevitably conducted wherever he went. Over the course of these years, many boys were brought and all were returned with the exception of one or two whom Baba retained for a short period. And again, at this time in London, Baba gave the duty to certain ones to go out and search for such a boy. A few English youngsters were brought to Baba at the hotel. One of them was very drawn to Baba and he was kept for three days. One day the lad asked Vishnu, where is he? Who asked Vishnu? That long-haired, dumb gentleman. Chuckling, Vishnu said, he's, pre he's occupied at present. I wish to stay with him always, said the boy. Why, Vishnu asked. He is so very kind. I have never seen such a man. I feel like gazing at him forever. Okay, Eva, let's uh, have another reader, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, would anybody like to read who hasn't yet? I'll I can try. Uh, I can try uh, reading, okay. if you can hear me. Is that Jay? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jay. We haven't heard from you in a long time. 
Uh, yeah, good to see you guys. Where where is it on the page? Right on the top, and Rosalie, you'll be next. Uh, starting with the um, on Sunday. J hey, Bob, on Sunday, eleven December, nineteen thirty-two. Baba discoursed about reincarnation, explaining what spirit means. The soul always remains the same. It is only the spirit which reincarnates and takes successive possession of bodies. People do not understand what spirit is and only vaguely use the term. There are so many terms used for one aspect. The soul is infinite, everlasting, and pure. At present, you do not realize the soul, and your mind means everything to you. Yet the mind is not you. It is what clothes It is what clothes are to the body. You are not the mind that feels and experiences everything. You are not the ego. You are the soul. Until it is realized, the spirit has to reincarnate and change bodies. You change your clothing when it becomes old, and so it is with the body. You all have had so many bodies, yet your soul never changes. It is the soul which reincarnates again and again until you get back to the source of all, Baba. A quiet, reserved Scottish woman named Christine McNaughton, 28, was working at the Knightsbridge Hotel as a waitress and often brought Baba's meals to his room. After several days, Baba drew the group's attention to her, indicating she is a very spiritual type person, a very good soul. He asked them to draw her out into conversation, which they did. He later informed Norina, whom he had been coaxing to pay attention to Christine, that the girl had been her daughter in a previous lifetime. Wow. Before leaving, Baba wished to shake Christine's hand and he instructed the Kimco group to keep in contact with her. When Baba later called the group to India, he specifically instructed them to bring Christine along, even to pay her fare and supply her with the necessary clothes and pocket money. New persons came to see Baba in London, but he afforded little time to meet them as he had come especially for the sake of his close lovers, spending most of his time with Kitty, Margaret, Delia, Minta, Kim, Zilla, Audrey, Quinton, Will, and Mary Beckett, Tom Sharpley, Charles Purdom, Elizabeth, Norina, and Nadine. No, <clears throat> Quentin Todd brought his 75-year-old mother, Belle, to meet Baba, either on this visit or at another time, and she too became devoted to Baba. Baba gave her the Indian name Muradin and later sent her a shawl, which she wore quite often. These individuals were worthy of coming to stay at the ashram in India, which he was planning in the near future. As age related, many were attracted towards the outer beauty of the park, but they lacked the courage to bear the hardships and storms therein. The gardener keeps such hardy birds in his woodland who want to build nests there. Those who come only for a stroll through it just to see the garden sites and return to their nests outside are not permitted to remain. Many birds frequent the beloved sanctuary, but only a few fit to reside there. In the background, brooding, Meredith Starr was still perturbed with Baba because after so much publicity, Baba did not break his silence in America. Neither Meredith nor Margaret Starr came to see Baba during this stay in London, nor did Baba go to the Devon Shore retreat in Combe Martin. Footnote, the Devonshire retreat was disbanded and sold a year and a half later. Hmm. Their connection was outwardly severed. Though Meredith infrequently wrote to Baba, give me either the 400 pounds you owe me or illumination. Meredith once wrote, otherwise I will leave you and expose you as a fraud. When one of these letters came, Baba had it read out to the group, passed it around for them to see and threw his hands up to show how hopeless some situations were. Exacerbated, exasperated, 
he spelled out on the board, the West. Baba's relationship with Meredith Starr and the varying reactions were merely the outward aspects. No one can say what was going on inside or what work Baba was doing. Bound to the universe and bound by universal duty from the beginning of creation to the end, the avatar is connected with one and all, and he himself is everything and everyone. In his indivisible existence, he is all-pervasive and never leaves anyone, no matter how despicable their behavior may be. This is the avatar's greatness and his only weakness. He has compassion for all and cannot harm anyone. After a week in London, Baba bid farewell to his close ones and proceeded to Zurich on Wednesday, 14 December 1932. After landing at Calais, Baba may have traveled through Belgium on his way to Switzerland as a visa for Belgium had been obtained in London two days earlier. Besides the Mandali accompanying him, him were Norina, Elizabeth, Enid, and Quinton. The group arrived in Zurich the next day. Heidi and Walter Mertens and Otto Haas Hay were Baba's hosts. German-born Otto Haas Hay, 53, was an established fashion and theatrical costume designer and a good friend of Norina's first husband, Karl Wall Wallmuller. Otto had founded the Zurich Art and Model School in a few large wood paneled rooms on the first floor of a building above the Italian consulate. Footnote the design school was located, it just gives an address. Go ahead. He arranged a reception there for Baba, who met with various people from 10, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and from 3 to 7 p.m. that day, after which he walked to by the lake for an hour. At the reception, a 54-year-old woman who later became one of the foremost artists in Switzerland met Baba for the first time. Her name was Helen Dahm. And years later, she stayed in India with other Westerners and did significant painting for Baba. Helen Dahm was the first, was the artist who in 1938 painted the murals on the inside of Mayor Baba's tomb. Another contact was Andre Aaron, 24, a French woman who was teaching hot couture sewing at Otto School. About her first meeting with Baba, Andre related, when Baba arrived, I did not really know who I was going to meet. I did not know who Baba was. I almost expected to see a fortune teller or someone who could tell me about the future. Professor Haas Hay introduced him to me, and I was quite moved and very open to him. He looked me in like a child with real love and kindness. He took me in like a child with real love and kindness. That is something I will never forget. Really, it was wonderful. It's love. That's all you feel. You no longer exist. You only think about Baba. That's what I felt. But it took me five months of reflection to really know that I loved Baba. The love, kindness, and devotion, a quality of being I have never experienced with anyone else, a human touch of this quality. Nowhere, not even with friends, in all the meetings I had with Baba, you felt such warmth and such kindness. We didn't think about small mundane things. Nothing mattered anymore. Sleep and food do not exist. Nothing exists. You feel yourself becoming nicer. That's what's wonderful. That's what is fantastic. One of the other main persons to find out about Baba from Haas Hay was Otto Bilo, an international businessman interested in spiritual matters. He was following a Sufi master along with his friend Walter Mertens, 47, when they heard about Meher Baba. After Otto Bilo met Baba, he told Walter that he must meet him too. At first, Walter's wife, Heidi, 39, an artist, was not too interested in Baba, as she was a follower, follower of Ramakrishna. In a reserved mood, Heidi went with Walter anyway and immediately was captured by Baba's love. Otto Bilo's contact proved significant as his daughter, Irene, was destined to become very close to Baba. Baba stayed overnight at the Mertens' estate at Feldmeilen, 
and left Zurich on Feb uh, Friday, 16 December at 10.15 a.m. He arrived in Genoa that night at 9.15 and stayed at the Savoy Majestic Hotel, where his future activities were discussed with Narina and Elizabeth. Certain Westerners were to proceed to India soon, and Baba planned out their visit in detail. For his return trip to India, Baba boarded the Esperia bound for Egypt on the 17th with Quintin Vishnu Kaka, Jalbai, and Adi Jr. Elizabeth and Narina left for New York three days later. Baba arrived in Alexandria at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, 20 December 1932. Departing in advance as instructed, Adi Jr., Vishnu, and Jalbai left by train for Port Said, where they sailed for India on the Naldera. Meanwhile, Baba, Kaka, and Quintin went on to Cairo and arrived at 6 o'clock the next morning. They stayed at the modest Hotel Pension Morandi, run by a Signor Morandi. As they were returning that night to their hotel from an evening walk around the city, Baba suddenly stopped and stood in the street without moving. A half minute later, he continued on to the hotel. Calling Quentin to him, Baba spelled on the board, I have just received from one of my agents a message saying that my presence is urgently needed in India. The next morning, Baba directed Quentin to go to the Thomas Cook office where a cable would be waiting. Quentin did as is instructed, found the cable just as Baba had said and brought it back. It read, your presence is urgently needed in, in India to complete certain arrangements. Okay, Jay, thank you. Rosalie, thank you. can you pick it up from here? I must say joy, Baba, to hear of the avatar's glorious life. <laughs> Jay, Baba. Baba left Cairo on 23rd December, 1932, and traveled out of the city to hell one, where he, they stayed at the English Visitors Hotel. On Christmas Day, he went to Saqqara to see the ancient pyramid of Jos de Josder. Baba had wanted to go by train, but Quentin suggested going by car and hired an antiquated model. There was no luggage rack, and Kaka had to arrange the luggage on the, on the mud guard and running boards. It seldom rains in this part of Egypt, but that day it began raining heavily after they had gone five miles. <laughs> Baba became quite upset with Quentin, who thereby learned not to make his own suggestions once Baba had expressed a preference. Returning to Cairo on the 26th, Baba went back to Alexandria on the 29th and returned again to Cairo, where he obtained a visa for Ceylon on the 30th. He went to the Cairo Museum and viewed the fabulous Tutankhamun collection. On the 31st, he again went to the old Coptic church where Joseph and Mary had safeguarded the infant Jesus from Herod. On the first day of 1933, Baba visited the Sphinx and the great pyramids of Cheops and Chephron at Giza. On Monday, 2nd January, 1933, Baba left for Port Said, setting sail the next day at 4 p.m. on the SS Balloran, bound for Ceylon. During the voyage, Baba asked Quentin if he had noticed anything unusual about a Dutch girl who was traveling with her family. Quentin at first noticed nothing of the ordinary, but he then saw that she walked with a limp and seemed in poor health. 
Baba explained, many, many years ago in India, she was a yogi. She was then in a male form. While attempting to attain a higher state of consciousness through fasting and meditation, he had a stroke and died. In every incarnation since, he or she has limped. In order to free her from this affliction, it will be necessary for me to win her affection. Baba proceeded to gradually draw the girl toward him. She spent more and more time with him each day, playing ping pong and draughts checkers. By the end of the voyage, a marked improvement in her health was noted. Nearing Ceylon, Baba indicated to Kaka and Quentin that he wished to rest there for a month in solitude before returning to India. They arrived in Colombo on Thursday, 12th January, 1933, Duny Day, staying noticeably, no, staying ironically at the White Horse Hotel for three days, footnote. The Kalki, present age, avatar is symbolized by a white horse. On Sunday, 15th January, Baba traveled into the interior of Ceylon and stayed in a bungalow called Villa Valencia on a hill between the towns of Bandarawala. Bandarawala. Wait a minute, I'm getting an echo. And Diatayawa, an area said to have the most equable climate in Ceylon. It was picturesque and a river of raging torrents ran through the deep ravine behind Baba's bungalow, causing a ceaseless roar. After settling in, Baba directed Kaka to find a spot where Baba could sit in seclusion for 24 hours, as he had done in Assisi. Sayar Ching, oh, <laughs> excuse me, I, I thought I was speaking a foreign language. Searching through the small town of Bandarawala, on 19th January, Quentin and Kaka found a Buddhist temple at the end of a narrow lane. It looked like a suitable place, suitable place, and they showed it to Baba. A priest would not permit them to enter the temple. So they descended a few steps and came upon an open courtyard. A door of an adjourning house opened and a very old man who looked at least a hundred years old came out. He seemed to immediately recognize Baba and he started talking to him through hand signs. Baba gestured back, quotes, I want a room where I can be in seclusion without being disturbed for 24 hours, end quotes, says Baba in gestures. The old man instantly understood and asked the Buddhist priest to open the temple and make a room available to Baba. Baba, however, changed his mind. Later, Baba remarked, and Baba says, that old man was on the fourth plane. I will push him to the fifth plane when I leave Ceylon. He is my agent in charge of central Ceylon, end quote. Baba's wish to sit in seclusion was perhaps only a pretext 
for contacting this advanced soul. In the interim, Adi Sr. came to Ceylon on 19th January, 1933 and returned to India after staying two days with Baba in Bandarawala, Wela. On 26 January, Baba met a reporter from the Ceylon Observer who questioned him about Mahatma Gandhi and India, religion, the purpose of his silence, and why he had gone to America. The following is Baba's response. Look at Gandhi's passive resistance movement. From the spiritual point of view, it is wonderful because it embraces sincerity, truth, and nonviolence. But ask me its value as a political weapon. I have nothing to do with politics. As to the untouch untouchability issue, I love the untouchables. They are close to my heart. Recently, I summoned their leader, Dr. Ambedkar, and advised him what to do. I consider the Orthodox Hindu attitude foolish, but there I leave it as I condemn no one and hate no one. My religion? I belong to no religion, and yet to every religion. Love is my principal agent. The infinite one can be attained only through love and sincerity. I do not believe in dogmas and ceremonies. God can be realized in every phase of life, art, science, nature, and beauty. That is my religion. I have been silent for eight years. It is not a vow, but it has been undertaken for spiritual lessons. Oh, wait, spiritual reasons. Shortly, my mission of preaching will begin. My reason for starting in America is that America, being the most deeply engrossed in material things and suffering the most in consequence, is the soil on which a new spiritual rebirth will first take place. America requires only the guiding hand of a master to redirect its material powers to the heights of spirituality. Your Ceylon is a most beautiful country. I shall visit it again. I will be leaving for India soon, and then I shall return here on my way to America via China and Honolulu. Will I found an ashram here? Perhaps. Baba, Kaka, and Quentin return to Colombo by the 27th of January. Baba fasted and remained in seclusion there on the 29th. And the next day, left for India by boat with Kaka. They traveled by train via Madras to Bombay, arriving on Thursday, 2nd February, February <laughs> the day, 1933, and returned to Nasik late the same night. Meanwhile, from Ceylon, Quentin sailed back to England as he had been instructed to escort to India those Western women whom Baba had invited 
Chanji left Shanghai on 10th January and met Vishnu, Zhao Bai and Adi Jr. in Bombay on the 28th. After staying in Nasik with the Mandali for a few days, Baba returned to Bombay. On Friday, 10th February, 1933, he abruptly decided on obtaining a British passport instead of a Persian one. And Adi Sr. was sent to the British consulate to bring the necessary forms. Chanji filled out the forms and Baba's photograph was taken. On the passport ad application, opposite the column denoting occupation, Chanji wrote, spiritual teacher. Opposite visible distinguishing marks, Chanji wrote, quotes, scar in the center of eyebrows, end quote. The scar was from the stone thrown by Upasni Maharaj in 1914. It had left a permanent mark. Baba had no objection in, to signing M.S. Arani on this application. This, the passport number 83270, was issued the same day and visas were obtained to visit China and America. Baba visited some Mohammedan followers in Bandra on the evening of the 10th. In speaking about happiness, Baba stated, quote, look at Hollywood movie stars. They have ample money, name, fame, everything. Still, they are unhappy. Why? Because money alone can not, can't bring happiness. It is one of the greatest and gravest mistakes of mankind to run after money to secure happiness, end quotes. About being possessed by a, quotes, evil spirit, end quote. Baba confirmed that in some cases it does occur, quotes, evil spirits sometimes take possession of certain bodies to satisfy their passions. That is the reason some very strange and horrible incidents occur. Yet the person doing it is not responsible for it, being possessed by a spirit, end quotes. On his return to Nasik, Baba began making the necessary arrangements for the arrival of his Western, quotes, doves. End quotes. Near Bombay in Kandaville, Kandav, Kandivli, Marker's large bungalow was arranged for the women, Mandalay, and rooms for the Westerners were booked at the Majestic Hotel. A three day visit to nearby Bandardara was also planned. Baba had originally called his Western lovers to stay in India for six months, after which he would accompany them to Europe and America via China and Japan. But this plan, like so many of Baba's, was soon to change. One day when Baba met with the men Mondali and Nasik, Ghani narrated the following dream. In my dream, I saw a saintly person whose figure and personality I could not exactly determine. Approaching him, I put many questions to him concerning Meher Baba, who and what he is. 
what he meant to do with us, the real meaning and significance of the word circle and others. In reply to all my queries, he spoke as follows, quotes, you have heard there was a prophet by the name of Jesus Christ, and after him came Muhammad of Arabia. The present day same personage is Meher Baba. It is good that you have gone to him just in time. Baba smiled and nodded in agreement. At 2 p.m. on Wednesday, 15th February, 1933, Baba went to Maribad to inspect and arrange matters there. 17 persons accompanied him in a, quotes, hopeless, end quotes, bus, as Chanji recorded. They picked up Masaji at the railway station and stopped briefly at Sangamner at 5 p.m. before proceeding to Maribad. Ghani had been summoned from Lanavla and met Baba on the 16th. The next day, Baba and the group returned to Nasik. Okay, thank you, Rosalie. Um, Ralph, would you like to read a page or two? Next page. Here I am, I found you. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, go ahead, find another reader because I don't have my glasses. Okay. Yes, I do, here they are. Uh -huh. Say, Baba. Oh, Portofino, 1933. They returned to Nasik two days later on the way back near Amidnagar. Baba appeared to avert a serious accident when he thumped Adi Sr., thumped the driver on the back just as the bus veered out of control. Adi was able to regain control and can continue safely to Nasik. After returning to Nasik, Baba left on the 19th for Bombay for visa work and made a second trip to Bombay from Nasik, leaving on Friday, the 3rd of March. Before leaving, he did a strange thing. He applied plaster of Paris to his arm for what appeared to be no reason. When the group arrived in Bombay, Baba did the same thing again. And the Mandali were wondering what was the hidden meaning behind Baba's actions. Late that night, Chanji's two-year-old nephew, Dara Dada Chanji, had a serious accident in which he was almost killed. Baba advised his parents to apply plaster of Paris to his injuries, and the Mondali then realized why Baba had done what he had. The noted singer, Master Krishna, visited Baba at the confectioner's apartment as did Savak Mehta of Aden, who had met Baba in September when the Victoria had halted briefly in Aden. Baba paid a visit to the district of Vor in on Sunday. 5th March, 1933, 
having been invited by the Maharaja there. He stopped first at Lanafla, where Ghani and Tabali arranged tea and breakfast. Who is that a new person, Tabali? Have we heard that name? I don't think we heard it, no. Okay. After a brief stop at Nilu's in Pune, Baba went on to Bohr, B-H-O-R, where he was received grandly, and hundreds came for his darshan. Baba went to Kolhapur the next day, meeting with his lovers at the school there before returning to Nasik. On the 18th of March, 1933, Baba revealed that the perception per, excuse me, perception of movements and events in the world was different from that of an ordinary human being. Baba revealed that his perception and movements and events in the world was different from that of an ordinary human being. To me, all things appear moving very fast and quick, he stated. Otherwise, I would not be able to see things in time for my work. He did not explain further. Bayram, with his fiancée, Perrine, Mimo, and Mani arrived in Nasik on the 15th. Bayram and Perrine were married at the Zoroastrian Fire Temple in day, day Deoli, D E O L. Deolali. Deolali. My glasses are dirty. Somebody else better read. Deolali. Yeah. Deolali. Okay. Get up. In Deolali, a week later, on the first March, the wedding was much to Memo's delight. A pondle was erected near the cinema and decorated with colored lights and flowers. Lunch and dinner was served to about 50 guests from Bombay and Nasik. The next day, a much larger public reception was held with Baba present, along with nearly 300 guests. Various entertainment programs were offered, and Master Krishna sang at a special concert in the theater. And I think we're going to stop it right here. It's two minutes to the hour. Okay, that will end the reading for now. We'll stop recording.